It was 30 years ago, on the 11th of June 1986, that Ferris Bueller's Day Off was released, a movie where our eponymous high school senior skipped school for a day of fun in Chicago with his friends. Now, they've worked out that that day is, in fact, June the 5th, 1985, based on the baseball game that features in the film. But nobody has asked whether Ferris and friends were incredibly lucky to get away with the whole thing. That is, until now. Chicago is the third most populous city in America, and its streets are arranged in a regular grid, 31 wide by 41 high, and that makes it incredibly simple to mathematically describe Ferris's journey on his day off. We do that as a two-dimensional random walk. In fact, these things are used all over the place. In physics, for instance, we use them to describe Brownian motion and even some aspects of quantum field theory but further afield, in finance, we can talk about stock market prices using them. We can estimate the size of the web using a random walk. And in neuroscience, we can describe the cascade of neurons firing in the brain using this process and countless other examples, far too many to mention. The idea of a random walk is incredibly simple. At each time, Ferris will randomly choose what direction to go, either north, east, south or west, and then travel by one block in that direction. Once he's arrived, he will again choose at random which direction to go, and so on, and so on. Given enough time, a random walk will cover the entire city with probability one. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Ferris was not choosing where to go completely at random, and that is true. Most random walks will track back on themselves, cover ground over and over again, which is not something you do if you're just out for a day of fun and excitement. But it is the simplest mathematical treatment that we can do. So we're going to keep on going there. And if it makes it any better, maybe just pretend that Ferris was drunk at the time. Mathematicians do, in fact, equate a drunkard walking around a city as being a 2D random walk. Chicago city blocks are 660 by 330 feet. And using an average human walking speed of five kilometers an hour, it takes just under two minutes to walk an entire block. Now, Ferris's day off lasts nine hours between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. That means we've got 270 time steps to play with in our random walk. But there's a problem. There are four people out there that could entirely ruin his day. His mom, his dad, his sister Jeannie, and the Dean of Students at his school, Mr. Rooney, who for some reason is able to spend his whole day trying to catch Ferris out rather than actually doing his job. In the film, Ferris narrowly avoids all of them. But how likely would it be, in reality, for him to bump into any of them? To work this out, we need to consider colliding walks. Those are two independent random walks, which at some time will land on the same spot and collide. This isn't actually too hard to work out since the distance between two random walks is in itself a random walk. And the answer is an expected time of K squared, where K was their initial separation. Say we want to give Ferris the best chance possible. We'll put him and his foils on opposite corners of Chicago. The amount of time it would take for him to encounter somebody else would be 7.2 days. But we've got four people to avoid. So dividing by that number, we would expect him to come into contact with any one of his mum, dad, sister or Rooney within 1,296 steps or 43 hours and 12 minutes. To test this, I ran 10,000 different simulations of Ferris's random walk through Chicago, each time seeing how long it took for him to encounter either his mom, dad, sister, or Rooney. The average was 1,037 steps, or 34 hours, 34 minutes. Not too dissimilar from the theoretical calculation those differences actually come because we've treated the edges of the city correctly. But what's more interesting is to plot a histogram of those times. You can see it varies massively how long it will take for him to get caught out. It in fact follows a log normal distribution, which is the sort of thing you expect when you've got multiple random numbers multiplied together, which we certainly do in this random walk. 
Now from this distribution, we can actually work out the probability of Ferris being caught during his day off. And it's 1.78%, pretty small. But what if we were to place everybody in Chicago completely at random? Does that improve or reduce Ferris's chances of being caught? Well, it's not quite as simple as a yes or no answer. What's the average time that he will get caught? In fact, goes up to just under 47 hours. It turns out the distribution has completely changed. It's now an exponential distribution, exactly the sort you'd expect for completely random events to occur. So, in fact, most of his days off that I've simulated end up with him being caught in a much shorter time than that average. The chance of him being caught within this situation goes up to 20%. But what about if Ferris knows where his mum, dad, sister and Rooney are at every given point in time? Say he's got some anachronistic smartphone app to get around that. Well, you can mathematically prove that he could avoid them for up to 306 million time steps. That's 1,165 years. So really, we should never have worried about Ferris getting caught. You can take a day off work, take a day off school and not be found out, which is an absolutely terrible moral, but it is mathematically true. You're still here. It's over. Go home. But of course you can like and subscribe and share this video with your friends. But get out of here.